In recent years, Intel has been dominating the CPU market, and the Nitua NHL9i has become a go-to cooler for small form factor or compact builds. With its low profile, excellent fan, great acoustics, and solid performance, it's really hard to beat. But there's also the NHL9A on the AMD side, and there are some slight differences, so today we're gonna go over those and do a temperature test. Okay, so here we have both coolers. On the right, you have the NHL9i, and on the left, you have the NHL9A. So this is the AMD version, obviously, and this is the Intel version. Let's go over the differences briefly. They both have the same exact fan, nothing different there. Um, they both have the same plate here underneath and the same mounting points. The only difference is that the 9A is a little bit wider. As you can see, um, just stacking them together, look at the fins. So it's su substantially wider. I mean, it's a decent amount of width and fins there that you get um, in, with the 9A. And there's also more metal down here. And that also means that the heat pipes are longer as well. So I'm hoping to get some better cooling. Um, the NHL9i has a little bit more fin extension on the sides here. As you can see, it sticks over the lip a little bit, whereas on the 9A, it actually is indented a bit. So that's the real difference between the two coolers. And obviously, this comes with an AMD bracket and this comes with an Intel bracket. Both of these coolers are compatible with the Noctua AM4 upgrade kit. So we have both coolers with the fans off so you can see them a little better. Some of the other differences you'll see on the bottom here. The bottom of the 9A is completely flat. There's no indents or anything. It's just nice and flat. Whereas the bottom of the 9i has indents here and there's indents there. You can kind of see, see that? Whereas the 9a does not have that. That is for motherboard components for compatibility reasons. Uh, there's a cutout. Pretty much this whole side here is slit this cutout. You kind of see that ridge right there. And whereas the 9a does not have that, it's just one solid piece. There's also a space here. On this right side, you can see in the 9A where there's a gap in between the fins and the side panel, this metal side panel. I'm not sure why that is because that gap does not exist on the 9A. You get fans, fins in there as well. So overall, there is a decent amount more metal on the 9A and we'll see if that results in better cooling performance. Now let's slide over and take a look at the temperatures. For a test system, I'm using the ASRock AB350 Mini ITX motherboard, a Ryzen 7 17700 at stock settings, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 LPX 3000 RAM, and a Samsung 960 EVO for the boot drive. I kept the same exact fan curve and setting for each cooler. At idle, my fan was sitting at 1200 RPM, and at 100% load, we were hitting 2056 RPM. All temperature tests were run with the components sitting inside of my S4 Mini case with the lid off, so kind of a hybrid open air test system. So at idle, we only saw a one degree difference. During gaming, there was a two degree difference in performance. And when you jump up to using Prime 95 to push all cores to 100% load, there was a four degree difference. That's not insignificant. Four degrees can be the difference between hitting your thermal max or not. Say you're overclocking or doing something like that. When you're running compact systems with the lids on, all that stuff, all your components crammed in there, uh, four degrees can be significant. Given the size of the coolers, I was expecting a little bit more performance from the NHL9A, but I think what holds it back from giving even better temperatures is the fact that it has the same fan. So the extra fins that you get on the outside edges, there's nothing pushing air through them, uh, actively cooling them, and just they just kind of radiate the heat. So I think that is why you don't see more dramatic temperature differences. So which cooler should you choose? Well, there are pluses and minuses to both. The NHL9i gets a plus mark for compatibility. It works on both Intel and AMD motherboards. The 9A only works on AMD motherboards. So that's one thing to consider if you think you're gonna be switching back and forth between platforms in the future. But the 9A does have better cooling performance. As you saw in the test, it definitely does offer better performance. And that performance number is even better if you can get better airflow coming into the cooler. So 
I noticed that when I put a 120 millimeter fan on top of that, which I know is a very specific use case, like say using an S4 Mini, and not many people are gonna be doing that. But when I did that, the cooler did outperform the 9i significantly. So there was a bigger jump in performance when you get air going over all those fins as opposed to just that center square piece. But overall, I think these are both really good options. If you already have a 9i and you're jumping over to an AM4 platform, I think that you'd be fine. Obviously, you'll be able to cool most components. If you're gonna overclock and you really need to eke every last inch of performance out of it, you probably just wanna bite the bullet and grab the 9a. They're both $40. I'll drop links below for both of them. So you really don't have to worry about any price difference there. They both come with Noctua's excellent thermal paste and the same low noise adapters. So there's really no difference other than the actual size of the coolers and the brackets that they come with. I will be doing some additional overclock testing and I'll add that to the article on the website. I'll drop a link below for that as well. As always guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay, this is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.